Hello, I'm Luke from Wex, and tonight we are doing a low light tutorial in central London with the A7S III. Stay tuned. Okay, so it would be silly to not take you through, first of all, what I bring on a shoot like this with me. Um, so let's start with the camera. What camera am I using? Obviously, the Sony a7S III. This camera is absolutely incredible. This alpha range has always been amazing for low light. That's what they're known for. That's why people get them. Um, this, the, the a7S II I used to use a lot, and that was amazing for low light, but this is even better. The picture profiles that it gives you, S-Log2, S-Log3, S-Cinetone, like, we'll go through those tonight. And they just give you so much dynamic range. They're fantastic at reducing noise. It's an amazing camera for low light. So of course, we've brought it along. To complement this, obviously we're using Sony glass tonight. Um, and I'm starting with A24. This is a G Master Prime 1.4 24, very light, very nifty. You can chuck it on a gimbal if you wanted to. It's, it's, just, it's just a gorgeous image, nice and wide, just what you want for a shoot like this. Next would be a Nifty 50. This is a bit heavier, um, but oh my God, it's a 1.2. A 1.2 G Master Prime lens. I cannot tell you how beautiful it is. Uh, so really excited to use this tonight. And again, aperture wise, these are all super low and they're gonna let in tons of light. Um, complemented with this camera, just perfect. And then finally, we have the 85 1.4 G Master Prime lens. All of these lenses work perfectly in tandem together, letting tons of light, really low aperture, perfect for a shoot like this. And then finally, before we set off, I would use a filter. Now this is called the Glimmer Glass uh, Strength One filter from Tiffin. And what these do is you put these on the end of your lens and basically they give you this soft kind of roll off with the highlights and in, in, in the lights that we're gonna be shooting tonight. And it just makes this very filmic, very cinematic look. Um, so I like to have that on a low light shoot as well. We won't shoot everything with that, but I will show you the difference and let you judge for yourself if you like it. So that's enough about kit. Let's go shoot some stuff. So you'll hear people talk about the exposure triangle when it comes to nighttime shooting. And what this is, is the ISO, the aperture, and the shutter speed. These are absolutely crucial to understand. Your ISO is about the camera and how much light that can let in. The aperture is about how much light the lens can let in. And then your shutter speed is to do with your frame rate. So if you're shooting at 25 frames per second, which is the usual, you would double it and you'd put your shutter to 50. If you were shooting at 50 frames, you put it to 100. And the shutter angle should always be double. Now with the Sony a7S III, you have different picture profiles and each offers a dual base ISO level. Uh, for S-Log3 it would be 640 for daylight and then 12,800 for nighttime. But each one's going to have its own different ones. That dual base ISO level is optimized for the camera and the picture profile and it's going to give you the least amount of noise and the best color science. Other picture profiles that are available are also pretty good for low light. I would tend to recommend that you would use either S-Log2 or S Cinetone if you're gonna shoot in the night. Tonight I'm using S Log 2 and I just find that that provides a lot less noise. S Cinetone is good too, but you're gonna get less versatility in the grade. You're not gonna be able to push the colors very much. You're not gonna be able to push your exposure, but S Log 2, you'll get best of both worlds, so I would recommend that one. So when you're shooting at night time, white balance becomes a whole different ball game uh, from shooting in the day. In the day, really, you're just kind of flitting between inside and outside, you know, fluorescent lighting versus daylight, and the difference is pretty obvious. Whereas at night time, it's not so obvious because you've got lots of different colored lights coming at you from all directions. So look at this, for example, behind us. This is a light that's changing constantly. You're gonna get very warm lights, white lights, it's, it's, it can be a little bit tricky. So what we're gonna suggest is that you put your white balance on automatic. Now I wouldn't usually uh, advocate for doing something on automatic settings because it seems lazy, but for nighttime setting, it's fine. It's fine and it's gonna save you a lot of headache.
So obviously you want your footage to be as dynamic and exciting as possible. So you gotta look for subjects that are exciting. Uh, so we found a musician back there in the middle of Covent Garden and that was great, it was, it was so wholesome, there were like kids coming to watch him clapping, dancing along, it was lovely. And within that, because it's um, a low lit setting, I can use the lowest aperture possible and get these lovely cinematic shots where you've got like a low shallow depth of field and it all just looks really lovely so I was really happy with some of that stuff. One of the big challenges you're going to have when you're shooting at this time is finding key lights. Things that you can light a subject with. So for tonight, like what we're doing right now, we've gone and found a nice big source of soft light, a shop window with a lot of light coming out of it. It's the brightest thing we could find. So just look around, take a quick scan, find the brightest thing you can and put your subject right there, if you've got a subject. But this is perfect. Um, it's going to be hard to find. Obviously, usually what you're going to have is harsh street lights and you're looking for big sources of light, big soft sources. So we've actually been really lucky tonight. We've got gorgeous clear night sky, not cloud in the sky, which is great in terms of the practicalities of shooting. I'm not, I'm not wet and the camera's not getting wet. Um, but if you ever do find that you're shooting and it starts raining, don't be afraid to keep shooting because actually it creates a really nice atmosphere for your shots. You know, you get, you get the reflection of the water on the ground. You get this kind of steam in the air, the, the, the way that the, the light hits the rain, it's just gorgeous. So if you find that you're getting frustrated with the weather, don't keep shooting, it's gonna look great. So we're in the West End area of central London and we just stumbled across the Wyndham's Theatre. And I just love the, the sort of like bulb lights they've got going on there. And I thought it'd be a really good opportunity to show you the glimmer glass filter. Now, this is a kind of a creative look that you can use when you're shooting in a low light setting and it's going to give you that roll off in your highlights and from the bulbs just over there so let me just show you what that looks like and i'll go get i'll go get some shots of that a bit closer up so you can really see um, but a really good way to expose for a light like this which is actually really bright in comparison to everything else around it is to use the various features that the sony cameras actually offer so you've got gamma assist you've got zebras you've got histogram You've got your waveform and all these tools are inbuilt in the camera and you can use them to expose properly for your image. So we're in Chinatown and honestly, I just think this is the most beautiful thing ever. Like look around, it's absolutely gorgeous. And what we're gonna be looking out for here is because Chinatown is very much about the food. We're gonna be looking through windows, we're gonna be looking at steam, we're gonna be looking at people making food, and we're also gonna be looking for alleyways, and there's a lot of different cool alleyways in Chinatown, and we look for some silhouettes and shadows. So join us down here, this should be really nice to look at. Okay, so I haven't found someone making food, but I have someone found someone enjoying their food, and the food is very, very hot and steamy, which is quite a nice shot. Not a great deal to say about this shot, um, except that I just really like it, you know. Um, you got the lanterns above, a nice big source of light up there, which is creating all these lovely shadows. And in, you know, at night time, just, it just looks really nice. So whenever you're shooting, just look for where your eye is drawn and go and film it. So don't forget to look for shadows. This is a gorgeous example light behind me coming straight down, very sharp shadow, it's gorgeous. Now you're probably thinking, Luke, why are you so well lit in the nighttime? How have you done that? There you go, another amazing example of a key light. 
Okay, so it wouldn't be a night out in London if you didn't get on a rickshaw. We're joined by Kadir, who is going to take me um, out on the town and we're going to try and get some cool shots, low light, in Soho. All right, so let's see what we can capture on this rickshaw. Now, what I'm going to make use of here is the uh, image stabilization, okay? So if you put it on active, we should be able to get slightly steadier shots than we usually would, but let's see how <laughs> let's see how steady my hand can possibly be. And it's a good idea to be in 50 frames per second whilst you're in a situation like this, because uh, Kadir's good at doing a good job at, uh, at keeping it steady, but I've got a feeling it might speed up at some point. So what I want to do now is a little test between each of the picture profiles that are really popular with Sony. So we've got S Cinetone, S Log 2 and S Log 3. Those are the typical ones that people tend to use. We're going to try them out over this lovely landscape here, Trafalgar Square, and we're going to test for noise, image quality, see which you think is best. Okay, so we are shooting in S Log 2 right now in an ISO of 12,800, which is the upper uh, base ISO for nighttime, uh, which is optimized. We're in 25 frames per second because that's going to give us the most amount of light. 50 shutter. Okay, now, so what I'm going to do is head to the function menu, go to picture profile, and we were in S log 2. We're going to switch over to S log 3. Okay. Now, we're still going to be in 12,800. Let's hit record. Lowest aperture possible, 1.4. Automatic white balance. All the settings are the exact same. So what we're looking for now is just to see if S-Log3 performs better than S-Log2 in terms of noise, in terms of image quality. And also, I'm also going to be wondering about the grade and how much you know that allows as well. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch from S-Log3 to s Cineto. Now this is Sony's kind of baked in look, um, which you don't need to push your ISO that high uh, because you're not really looking uh, to have a lot of versatility and a lot of lot to play with in post because the look is already baked in. So we're going to bring the ISO down to where I think it ought to be. So looking, kind of exposing with the eye, looking ahead, looking at what I see, what, what it should look like. I'm going to put the ISO at about a thousand. We can always bring, or 800. No, let's go a thousand. And we can always bring, we'll hit record. We can always bring highlights up and shadows shadows down or whatever we need to in post a little bit but again it's not going to give you as much um, in terms of dynamic range as S-Log 2 and 3 will. So let's have a look at that and see how that compares with the others. Again same settings 4k 25. So I hope you've really enjoyed this tutorial on nighttime shooting tonight. I had an absolute blast and um, thank you for sticking with us. Uh, nighttime shooting is definitely one of the biggest and hardest things to master as a filmmaker. It's, it's, it's tricky, uh, so I'm still learning. It's really difficult, but hopefully you've learned something. Um, let's just touch on a couple of things that we talked about tonight. So we got, the when it comes to actually exposing for something, um, like if you're exposing for a subject, you want to expose for their face, for them, 
Don't worry about if there's a big old bulb in the image. That's not what you're exposing for, and it's gonna be blown out anyway. So just worry about the thing that you're actually shooting. Um, and for that, you're gonna need your gamma assist, your zebras, and your histogram. Those three things um, are just, and your metering tool as well, but those things are gonna really help you to expose correctly. Um, and in terms of picture profile, S-Log2 works really well for me, but you know we've showed you these tests to kind of give you an idea. Maybe you'll find something that works better for you. But anyway, that's everything from us. I've been Luke from Wex Photo Video. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you on the next one.